Good afternoon, dear colleagues, and my name is Roswan, and here I represent our team in AI from the Innopolis University. It's in a small city in Nepolis in Russia. And we would like to introduce our solution to a well-known open catalyst challenge and discuss some details below. And uh, as we know that the carbon dioxide is an extremely disturbing greenhouse gas, which is released from the excess fuels of fossil fuels. And the idea is to convert it back to fuel or use it as building block for production of polymers and uh, large scale chemicals. And uh, this idea during the last 10 years was proven to be a very promising. But the main problem is that carbon dioxide molecules are very ionic and stable. Uh, it's because the carbon atoms in CO2 are the highest oxidation state plus four, and therefore it's necessary to develop efficient electrocatalyzed for carbon dioxide reduction processes and the uh, different roads of electrochemical CO2 can be realized through multiple electron transfer, uh, both in aqueous and organic solutions with suitable electrocatalysts. And the carbon dioxide can be converted uh, into small uh, C1 molecules like uh, formic acid, carbon monoxide, methanol, well-known methane, and also C2 and three, C3 building blocks like ethylene and propylene. And the main task uh, 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 on the catalyst community is to develop catalysts with the lower potentials and increase selectivity to desired products. And uh, our frequency analysis on this awesome open catalyst 20 data set revealed that the percents of acerbate dominates subdistribution of absorption energies and uh, exactly can be exported for regression as it was uh, done before. Uh, so, uh, but in our case, uh, we are limited by the percents of out of domain, both in catalyzed and acerbate examples and validation data sets. And we have to create a more general models instead of selected machine learning approach. And the first approach was to use niche activation functions as more regularized compared to switch. And uh, the result is small improve in uh, in domain and also in out of domain examples by, I mean, absolute error, both in energy within threshold values. Okay, as we know that different graph neural networks have recently achieved a great success in predicting uh, quantum mechanical properties, both for molecules and materials, and exactly now for catalyzed for catalytic processes. And in previous works, so called uh, MPNNs with appropriate message update and output functions, they really outperformed several well known uh, descriptor based baselines, and uh, this eliminate the need for complicated feature engineering, but an important task is to design MPNNs that can generalize efficiently to larger graphs uh, like catalytic uh, processes and uh, uh, generalizing to such larger graphs and uh, making these models uh, more domain specific for catalysis it's for us seems to be pretty challenging. And uh, uh, at the first approach, we, uh, we decided uh, to uh, how to, to featureize surface adsorbate and uh, uh, interatomic interactions in the ca bulk catalysts by itself by introduction of first column matrix, which is simple global descriptor and it mimics the extractive potential. But this form we can see it can also handle uh, interactions between atom itself and uh, between two different random atoms and uh, its extension. A logical extension of Coulombic matrix called Evelsum matrix, which uh, was designed for periodic systems. And it also models the interaction between atoms in periodic crystal through electrostatic interactions. And uh, also the next approach is Zion matrix, which captures features of interacting atom in a periodic system with a very low computational cost or just extension of the Zion matrix. And uh, here they are defined by the lattice vectors uh, and uh, Cartesian unit vectors. Uh, exactly this functional form has no physical interpretation compared to Coulombic matrix, but it captures some of its properties like periodicity of crystal lattice, uh, which we observe for catalyzed exactly, and infinite energy when two atoms, they overlap. Okay, so the metal non-metal bond properties, mainly uh, they are determined uh, by the number of unpaired and paired electrons of the orbitals and also SD 
uh, PD and PP interactions between uh, both adsorbate and surface atom and uh, uh, bulk atoms itself and catalyzed uh, our description of local structure in terms of the coordination of valence, uh, of valence atoms, which was explained above. It's a representation of atoms and surrounding environments, which is derived by converting the standard notations into uh, one hot vectors just using a dictionary of the valence uh, subshell orbitals. So here you can see uh, that S1 and uh, P5 and S2 elements of the orbital field matrix uh, correspond uh, to the coordination numbers of sodium atoms and chlorine atoms, which surround uh, the sodium side. And the next, from this sparse matrix, we designed the representation of local chemical environment by considering the sum of all weighted vector representation of all atoms. Uh, here O is the representation vector of uh, atom K and W its uh, weight of an atom which measures the contribution of the atom. And the atom at site P in the chemical environment can be represented using the OFIM as follows. Okay. And uh, we also present a simple and versatile representation, which is applicable to any deep learning models, not only uh, graph based. It uh, involves labeling the binding site atoms of the underlaxed uh, bare surface geometry by binary value, like is this. Uh, is this located in the threshold by one and two from some of atom ready or not? And uh, if it's located within, exactly we know it as interacted atoms by one. And uh, uh, this idea was inspired by the Uli set of work, but we haven't used the relaxed structures to extract coordination environment. And it's powered by the well-known and popular in recent two years Orbnet architecture, which used featureization of molecules in terms of symmetry that the atomic orbital, we propose so-called OFM network flow from the orbital field matrix. The first step we have uh, low-cost featureizations, which was performed both for atoms uh, like nodes and uh, bonds between atoms like edges. Uh, and then this node and edge attributes uh, is pro are processed by the embedding layer and message passing layers to produce transformed node and edge attributes, and then transformed node attributes for the encoding layer and each messing, message passing layers are extracted. Uh, there are new representations and uh, in the end we have uh, passing through the MLP specific decoding networks and if in the, our case it's uh, about four layers and then in the end we have node resolved energy contributions which are calculated uh, node wise just uh, by summation and the final uh, energy is just uh, one body summation of the nodes, like in Bernard Perinella uh, approach. And also uh, Jorgensen uh, and all, they have proposed novel neural message passing, and uh, which was uh, very pliable for both molecules and materials by extending the SHNet model. Uh, it was extended by an edge update network. Uh, this allows the information exchange between atoms to be dependent on the sending and receiving atom. And uh, this simple extension led to a high improvement of SHNet by itself. And um, uh, next approach, uh, so, uh, so where we are working, uh, DimeNet proposed by ClickPara. And he solved, uh, and his colleagues, and he solved this directional embedding by noting that an atom by itself, uh, it's rotational invariant. And this invariance can be broken by neighborhoods uh, that interact with this atom. And uh, those atoms who are inside of the, are located inside of these cutoffs. C. And uh, each neighbor break up the rotational variance of the second. And uh, in this case, the introduce additional degrees of freedom. And uh, they also represented these uh, rotational uh, degrees in their models. Uh, and they, in the end, they get a very effective diamond net architecture. Uh, okay.
And uh, we also choose these architectures to be uh, featureized by both force matrices, orbital field matrix, and binary representation of catalyzed. And here you can see the performance of our models on the relation data sets and the bar charts. They show that both mean absolute error and an error within threshold values. They improved uh, more for edge update net here and OFM net after introduction of the orbital field matrix and binary labeling of catalytically active side. And Ewald sum is also seems to be the most effective descriptor among Coulomb and Zan matrices. And the last approach, which we provide here, is the collaboration between uh, uh, well known graph representation and the supervised learners like gradient boosting. And this gradient boosting algorithm, we choose uh, cat boost, uh, which creates symmetrical trees and boosts them weighted in weighted way and uh, uh, so we tuned also parameters of integrated framework and uh, here you can see a small improve both in main absolute error and energy error within threshold but the main advantage as we see here and opportunity for active learning the ability to extract uncertainty from cat boost model uh, it will uh, and uh, we see that it, it can be very useful for high throughput screening based on active learning approach Okay, and uh, we also see the challenge for community to create a detailed reaction mechanisms for modeling, modeling of processes and high throughput screening, which is based on the absorption energies of all intermediates together with reactants and products, and maybe in future it will be also activation energies, and this will be extremely useful uh, for both uh, uh, creation of uh, reaction charts and screening. It was not above. And uh, also just small warning that this research exposed 150 kilograms of carbon dioxide during training on Tesla V100s. Uh, okay, so we have more obligation to reduce, convert it back to something more useful than CO2. Okay, and this is our small team. Uh, and uh, thank you very much for your attention. And we are ready for your questions.